So you're in a survival situation and you need to build a shelter, but you've got no tools. You need to keep warm, you need to stay out the wind, and ideally you need to stay dry. You've got to use the resources that are around you. This is my take on making a short-term survival shelter for a 24-hour situation. The first thing I want to do is check out what resources are surrounding me. Obviously, if I was in a survival situation, I'm not now, but if I was, I'd need to be conserving my energy, trying not to waste it. So I'd want to do the minimal amount of effort and work as possible, but get the maximum amount of reward from it. So the first thing I need to do is take in the environment, what's around me, the nature, the situation, the weather. The first thing I need to take in is the resources. What's behind me is I'm in a coniferous woodland, it's, lots, it's a soft wood, it's pine. This is all Scots pine, there's loads of it around. I know instantly that that's gonna be quite good for fire lighting. The other thing I notice is that it's fairly dense in this woodland, which means there's the chance or every chance of a tree that could blow down in a strong wind situation. So I'd need to be aware of the site of where I choose to set up my shelter to make sure that it's not near any trees that are half sort of falling down or branches that are looking like they're gonna fall down on top of me. My safety comes first at the end of the day. So let's go have a look at the environment and see what we can get. Looking at this woodland instantly, I can see there's plenty of deadfall and dead trees around. Now that's a great thing because there's loads of resources for shelter. However, it was also a bad thing because it can mean that things can fall, fall down on top of me. There's also moss around, which means it's a fairly damp area and doesn't see much sunlight. It's likely to get a little bit more cold. But judging by all these dead branches, they look like they'd be fairly easy to snap and great to get a shelter going. So I now I need to find my site of where I'm going to set up the shelter. Over here, I can already see a natural area where I'd like to set up a shelter. There's a big tree here that's fallen down. It snapped, for, looks like it's snapped down at the roots here, so it's rotting away. It's gone right there, and that's probably the root system there. This has been down a long time because there's moss growing on it as well. But this looks like an ideal height. It's not too high. There's a few overhanging branches here, which I'd probably need to get rid of because they look a bit unstable. Then I need to check above. Looking above, there's a few, what I would call widow makers. They're not necessarily gonna to do too much damage, but these little branches that are bent over here, I need to move that out of the way. But above the actual shelter log here, the main ridge line that I'm gonna use, it looks like we're pretty clear above. So this looks like a safe place to set up a shelter. So I've already got a natural ridge line of this tree. I just wanna check where the top of the tree is there, that it's not gonna slip down because there's gonna be weight on this ridge line. If I put too much weight and that ridge line slips down, it could fall on top of me and damage me during the night. So here's the end of the log here. There is a bit of spring in it. There's a bit of a log that's fallen through here. But if, if you can see naturally, if this slips down, it's gonna slip into that V-notch section there. Don't throw away these resources because these can all be used to help build the shelter. I'm just clearing the area a bit of any loose branches. So that I know what I can work with. Loads of materials here. Okay, so there's a branch here above my head that could be dangerous. There's a couple of pokey branches here which I don't want to poke my eyes out with. I'd like the entrance to the shelter that side. I just want to get all these pokey branches out of the way so that I have a comfortable ground to work with. The ridge pole has plenty of these protruding sticks where branches used to come out. I'm actually gonna leave these on because they'll help to balance any sticks that are leaning up against this and stop them from sliding back down or sliding forward off. It means that there's less work for me having to pull these off and obviously it's more of a stable and secure structure. So leave, I leave these on. On the underside, I'll probably take them off because that's where you can either poke your eye, poke your head, could cause some damage. So I'll take the underside ones off but I'll leave any 
any ones on the side and the top. So the style of shelter that I'm going for is what's called an A-frame shelter. It's one of the uh, most simple and rudimentary forms of uh, bushcraft shelters that you can make. I've built plenty of A-frame shelters in the past and the common mistake that I've made personally is I've always started up near the top of the, uh, the ridge pole here and I've ended up making the shelter far bigger than it ever needed to be. So from experience, from my experience, I prefer to start building the shelter and resting sticks up against the bottom, the lower part of the ridge pole and that way you can gauge how big you want your shelter and not set it too big and end up doing too much work. So all I need to do now is snap up loads of smaller sort of logs and sticks of which there's plenty around here, get them here and then I'll start building it. To begin with I'm only going to need sticks really that are kind of this length. I can use fairly rotten ones for down low, for low down and I want them slightly angled forward because all that pressure eventually is going to push this way. I don't want them angled this way, they're just going to slide off. I personally like to slightly angle them a little bit forward, like that. I don't like smashing them against trees like that, because A, it obviously damages the tree, but B, this could whip round and go back in my eye, like that. Nice clean break, two pretty even sized sticks. Obviously other ways of breaking the sticks are putting your foot or your heel on there, pulling up and levering here, can, probably not as good for your back, because you're bending over and you will get tired but a good way of snapping obviously thicker logs. Once you start getting to thicker diameter branches or logs, you won't obviously be able to split them with your foot. You need to find a pivot point in between two trees and use the trees as a, as a breaking point for the, the stick itself. Just need to make sure now I go towards the end of the stick. So I've got the most leverage. I'll probably keep that long one there. I'm using all dead wood, it's all found on the floor. I'm not cutting down any trees, I've got no cutting tools. You can genuinely identify the rotten and dying trees from the lichen or the moss or fungi growing on it. Be aware that the more fungi or lichen it or moss that it has growing on it, it's likely to be weak and form a weak spot in your structure. Just be aware of that. At this point I can test whether I need to put any more sticks in because I can just lie down and I know that that far stick here, even those three I don't really need because my head's under the shelter already and this is why I always start at the bottom of the shelter then work up, it's just my way of doing it. But that, I'm happy with that. So I've got the basic structure of the shelter complete. Obviously there's loads of gaps. It would act like a sieve at the moment uh, if it did rain. So I need to plug in those gaps, again, with natural materials that I can find around me. It's easiest to use the resources that are most abundant because it saves you having to travel far distances 
to then bring it back and again you're expending more energy then one of the uh, most common things we've got is down here because it's a very dense woodland a bit moss some sphagnum moss there's diff other different species of moss as well but this is ideal because it's very peaty soil it's so easy to just peel this back in nice big clumps like that you can actually see the clay underneath this soil as well there's sort of sand and clay there and that's the peaty area of the soil but this just peels back in really large clumps and actually what you could do is roll it back almost like turf like you do on your garden lawn and if you just keep rolling it like that that's generally the technique I use then once it breaks off you've got yourself if I show you here a pretty large area almost this can act like shingles really and that should help to at least water resist it might not prevent all of the water that rains because moss does tend to absorb water but it also does retain it as well at the end of the day if i have my shelter as it is and leave it like it is now i'm definitely going to get wet in there whereas if i have moss like this it's going to just help slow down that rainfall yes i will still probably get wet but at least it will prevent it and slow it down a little bit more but what it will do is stop the wind it'll act as a windshield if i work from the bottom up it gives that moss that's placed on the top of the shelter something to lean up against if i ended up doing it from the top down eventually it's going to slide down and leave exposed parts at the top of the shelter so it's much easier to start building it up from the bottom as you can see that that was one piece of layer that i got there so this if i am in a survival situation which i'm obviously not now i'm just um i'm just simulating it but if i was i then got a large amount of material with very little energy expenditure and you know it's nice and quick to do it's also widely available it's right down below the shelter just here just keep rolling it back and turfing it up it's handy because it grows right near the shelter and what i'm doing is i'm just roll it getting a uh, the roots of the moss up and it, a nice bit, like a nice bit of turf there. There's another big hunk of moss. Just gonna stack it up here for now.
So there is this issue of this tree here. So I may try and get that down because it is a f it could obviously fall on a shelter. I shouldn't knock it down, but just to give you an idea and the difference, here's the, the one side that I haven't done with moss yet. Plenty of gaps, loads of chance for the rain to get in there. Still a fairly stable structure, but then this side is the one with the moss on. And you can see it's much, much more watertight. That moss will obviously grow into that wood over time and it'll all decompose together so it's all letting nature go back to its original form. And the main difference is inside. This is where you can see the difference. Look at that. Left hand side here, where there's no sticks, uh, where there's no moss, sorry. That would be, I'd get, I'd get completely soaked. Right hand side, that's completely sealed off from the rain there. There may be one or two tiny gaps up the top. But other than that, you can see the difference that moss makes. You can see where I've pulled up the moss. You can actually see the faint kind of uh, darker patches now of the peaty soil where I've pulled up this moss. I tried to scavenge for the moss really as close to the shelter as possible so that I don't have to travel so far. This moss will all grow back. Everything around here that I've taken here, this will all grow back and it will get mossy again. But yeah, try, I've tried to take it as close to the shelter as possible so that it's the minimum amount of effort that I need to build this shelter. There we go. It was rotting away. Now that's clear of the shelter. So this is the finished shelter now. You can see the A-frame structure to it. I've walked around the shelter and checked for any gaps, especially where the support sticks meet the ridge pole. That's a typical place where I'm gonna get gaps and that's most likely where the rain will enter. But I've put that as moss over the top like that to, to act as a, well, runoff really, to get that water coming off as quick as possible. This will obviously still leak. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's much better than being out in the open facing the elements. One of the things I didn't mention earlier was the, the wind direction. That's a really important thing to think about when you're setting up a shelter, especially in a, in a survival situation. You've got to, you know, the elements at the end of the day are going to be the things that will be testing you the most. 
this, the wind's coming from that direction. So it's hitting the back of the shelter and coming up over it. Obviously the wind can change and in that sort of situation, this would not be an ideal, ideal shelter if it did change and was coming into the shelter. What I would do is block off this entrance here, pull a couple of side sticks out and pull the moss away from the side and have an, a shelter, uh, an entrance sorry, at the side of the shelter. That's personally what I would do if the wind direction did change and come straight into the shelter. So yeah, this is it. This is home. It's like a hobbit home, little hobbit house. Uh, the moss obviously acts, it's got two things really. It helps to prevent, doesn't prevent water coming through, but it helps to reduce the water coming in, any rainwater coming in. And the second thing is that it is uh, has very good insulating properties, so it will uh, retain that heat. Downsides of having moss, uh, it's going to retain that water as well, which means that it will, if it does get damp and wet, it will, if it's, if it's dripping through, it will continue to drip for a fair while. It's almost like a sponge. It acts like a sponge. In a survival situation, you just got to use the materials that are around you. And I have tried to use all the materials that are around me. I've used no tools, I've just used my hands. And I've just used, you know, the moss in the close area. I've used sticks in the close area. I've used the log that was the ridge pole that was already here. So I've really tried to expend as little energy as possible. I do realize that this is not a perfect shelter by any means. It's not a perfect uh, natural shelter. Things that I would say are the disadvantages from this one that I've built. Uh, it's a little bit flat, the angle on it. I would have rather it be a little bit more steep. The flatter you have it, the more likely it's gonna collapse and the more likely that when the rain does hit, it's gonna puddle and sit on that shelter. I mean, it's a nice steep angle. I'm quite pleased with it, but it's not the best. So that's one of the downsides. Um, another downside was this ridge pole. When you saw me earlier bouncing up and down on it, uh, it's wedged in now, but when I was bouncing up and down on it, it was really springy and I wasn't too uh, kind of confident in that. But, you know, it took my weight and I really was pulling on it and it didn't give. So if I could do that, I'd figure it'd have to be one hell of a storm to be able to uh, to basically bring it down. But that's a disadvantage as well. Uh, another disadvantage, you may have seen me earlier just clearing out uh, the, the, the debris and all the, all the duff and pieces of pine needles and, and sticks and everything from under the shelter after it was built. In my opinion, I probably should have done that and cleared the area before I built this A-frame. I'm not too sure. I'm sure uh, you guys do it differently. It's just the way I've done it, but that again is probably a disadvantage because I had to then, you know, get in there and it was quite awkward to, to get things out. Another disadvantage, <laughs> it's probably slightly big. You could definitely sleep two people in this shelter. It's not so much, it's meant designed to be a one person shelter, but where I've made it so big, you know, I've used up that time and that effort where it could have been smaller, I would have finished the shelter in probably half the time. This shelter took me, just so you know guys, an hour and a half. Uh, that's with, that's quite long I realise for, you know, in a survival situation you need to build it probably quicker than that. But that's with me filming and moving the camera all the time and that, if you guys out there who film, you know that takes a long time. So it was about an hour and a half, maybe hour and 45 minutes. For me the most time consuming part was uh, breaking the sticks. That was quite time consuming, especially when it got to bigger sticks because I had to go and get the, the sticks, drag them over to a pinch point, snap them. And actually for me, that was the most time consuming part. Uh, stacking them up against the log didn't take too long. The moss was, was fairly time consuming as well. Let me just show you the inside. There are a few gaps still that I need to fill, but as you can see, it's pretty well covered. I would be dry if I was in this shelter. I'm quite pleased with it. Took me a while to clear out all the duff and everything and the debris on the forest floor, that took a while. Should have done that earlier. I wouldn't sleep directly on the ground there. Uh, that's gonna get me cold, I'm gonna, that's gonna sap the heat out of my body. I'd either have built a raised bed or I would put layers and layers of moss down, but I'd have to make sure that that moss is dry. Uh, or even better would be get, to get some spruce boughs or something like that, or pine boughs, there's plenty of pine here, but spruce boughs would be ideal uh, and that could act as a nice soft bed. Another option for the bed, I'm not going to build the bed in this episode, uh, this is just more for the actual shelter itself, but another option to get the bed a bit more comfy is this dead grass here. There's plenty of it surrounding this woodland, it's not too far from my shelter, so it's easy to harvest and I can just pick it up in fairly big clumps like this. It is dry, obviously if it was wet I probably wouldn't go for this option, I'd go for a raised bed. If everything was wet I would build a raised bed. A little bit more difficult with no tools but it is doable. And that can act as a nice soft, almost like straw where animals uh, sleep on. And it also would help to retain my heat a little bit 
and keep me up off the floor. The other advantage of this shelter over perhaps a lean-to shelter is that you can see it's a bit more stealth, it's a bit more low profile. It almost just blends into the forest quite naturally. So if you were in that survival situation where you're uh, escaping, evading, you're, you're hiding out, you're bugging out, you're getting away from somewhere or someone, this type of shelter is fairly good for that. Well, thanks so much if you watched this video all the way through. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this sort of video, give the subscribe button a hit and make sure to tick that bell notification so you can get emails whenever I upload a video. Uh, I just want to say a massive thanks to all my subscribers and everyone who's following the channel. You've been really helpful, really supportive, uh, and I'll see you soon in the next adventure.